Today, I ask the question, is ray tracing doomed? AMD is actually pulling it off in an APU that has more cores than the 9070 XT. This is insane. Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, is ray tracing doomed? That is the question, and it may seem like a silly one, given nearly every new game, big or small, just has to include ray tracing or path tracing. Some are even requiring GPUs with hardware ray tracing support because the game uses it by default and there's no option to turn it off. So how can I even ask this question? Well, there's one high profile game that just released, which doesn't include ray tracing at all. You don't even have the option to turn it on, and that's Battlefield 6 along with new benchmarks that show us just how nice it is to have a company focus on performance. Now, what's really wild about Battlefield 6 doing this is that Battlefield 5 was one of the first games to include real-time ray tracing support, which Nvidia showed off at their RTX 20 announcement. So for them to drop support in the newest title is a surprising move to make, and it was intentional. According to a technical director from one of the studios that worked on Battlefield 6, he states, quote, No, we are not going to have ray tracing when the game launches, and we don't have any plans in the near future for it either. That was because we wanted to focus on performance. We wanted to make sure that all of our effort was focused on making the game as optimized as possible for the default settings and the default users. So yeah, they're not playing around. And you can definitely see this in the benchmarks for the game. Starting things off, as you can see here, it shows a 9060X at 1440p, not 1080p or anything like that, but 1440p, and it shows the different presets that they have. So low, medium, high, ultra, and then overkill. And you can actually see that even in overkill, the 9060 XT was able to get around 60 FPS. Now the 1% lows do drop below it, but even moving to ultra, it stays above it. And then when we look at 1080p, now this is 1080p high, you can see that a ton of GPUs are able to do fairly well here. But I really want to kind of focus on the 1080p overkill. First, if you needed more proof that 8 gigabytes just isn't going to cut it anymore. You can see here that even the 5060 Ti 8 gigabytes, we're talking once again 1080p, yes, at overkill, but still a 5060 Ti looks like it does great at average frames, but then when you look at the 1% lows, it does terrible. We're talking 30 7 FPS. And you can see this across the board with 8 gigabyte cards. You can see this one 73 down to 35, the 5050, 57 down to 31. And in fact, I do actually want to mention that you can also see this with 1080p high, though not as drastic. The 5060 Ti goes from 131 all the way down to 73. And you can see that it is a bigger drop versus cards that have more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. But back to this once again, like I said, I actually want to compare it to another new game in a similar genre that was just recently released, but it also included ray tracing. That is specifically Borderlands 4. And when we compare Borderlands 4 at 1080p at Badass, so this is the highest rating versus the 1080p overkill in Battlefield 6, when we look at the 4060 Ti, and we'll even look at 16 gigabytes, you can see that it's around 35.7 FPS. While in Battlefield 6, we're looking at 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti, it gets over double the FPS at 84. I mean, it's night and day. Now, obviously, these are two completely different games, but I'd argue that this is what happens when you take the approach of really optimizing for performance instead of adding dev time for things like ray tracing. At the end of the day, while Battlefield 6 may not have some of the cool reflections that the previous title had, it still looks really good. And so far, it's been a huge success, which I think shows developers that you don't have to include ray tracing in your game to sell a ton of copies. And I 
think that means we'll likely see more developers weigh the pros and cons of ray tracing instead of just including it by default. But I also don't think that this completely marks the absolute end of ray tracing. I think it's going to really be required to get to a new level of graphics fidelity, but until hardware can make up for the massive drop in performance, it shouldn't be a given either. And that's great news for anyone hoping to buy a new GPU anytime soon, especially if you're saving a ton of money with today's sponsor. Jawa, the online marketplace that was made specifically to help gamers find PC components at incredible prices. And that of course includes GPUs like this 2080 Ti for just $230 or this 6600 for just $160. If you're not wanting something as old, don't worry there either because they have new GPUs as well. And they don't just have GPUs either. They have incredible deals on CPUs, motherboards, memory, even peripherals. They really have it all. Better yet, if you don't have enough money to get the card you really want, Jawa has a really sweet program where you can trade in your old GPU or CPU to put towards your new parts. That way you can save even more money. Now, for those who aren't wanting to build your PC from scratch, Jawa has you covered because they also sell pre-built gaming PCs from a ton of artisan builders. And I know I've said it before, but they have some really awesome ones. So if you've been thinking about getting new parts or buying your own PC, save money by visiting Jawa down in the description below. And next up for today, it's official. AMD is actually pulling it off. AM5 is getting support for multiple generations of products similar to AM4. And it's not just AMD telling us this and not delivering. We have proof that it's actually happening from a couple places. First, as you can see right down here, it says ASUS has officially confirmed support for Zen 6 CPUs. The information appeared in official marketing materials for the newly released AMD B850 M-based motherboard called AYW Gaming OC. And you can actually see it right here. It actually says Zen 6. Not only that, but you can also see that ASRock has confirmed it as well. It says ASRock published a short video on the Chinese platform Billy Billy showcasing several mid-range motherboards. The otherwise boring video included one key feature. These boards are quote Zen 6 ready. Basically, AMD has seriously done it yet again. They've somehow found a way to have multiple generations of products work on one socket. And that is, of course, in sharp contrast as to how Intel likes to handle their new sockets. They're constantly releasing new sockets, new motherboards. I mean, AMD does release new generations of motherboards, but they keep the socket the same. And while they do offer newer, you know, things like a, in the past, even a newer PCI Express slot, things like that, the older motherboards do still support the newer CPUs. Like I said, that does seem like it's happening yet again. And lastly for today, AMD is gearing up to launch the most insane APU ever. I'm talking this thing has more cores than their 9070 XT in an APU. Basically, if anything can prove that APUs are set to drastically hurt the discrete GPU market, this bad boy is it. And it's set to come in Microsoft's next-gen Xbox. That's right, we now have detailed specs for the next-gen console chip, if this leak from Moore's Law is Dead ends up being correct. And I will say that that he claims multiple sources are confirming this, so most of it is likely the real deal. Not only that, but what's really wild is that according to this, the Xbox chip, codenamed Magnus, is looking quite a bit faster than the PS6 APU, though also likely more expensive. Either way, let's get right to the specs. And starting things off, as you can see, this is one massive chip. In fact, at 408 millimeters squared, it's something like 30% larger than current gen console APUs. Not only that, but it comes with a 250 to 350 watt TDP. This portion is apparently an estimate, so he's not 100% sure on that, but what he is very confident in is the RDNA 5 GPU inside this beast, we are talking, according to this, it comes with a whopping 68 RDNA 5 CUs, and that's disabled from a total of 70 CUs. And like I said, that is more 
compute units than what's in the 9070 XT. Not only that, but this is RDNA 5 instead of RDNA 4, meaning this bad boy will likely beat the 9070 XT. Not only that, but according to this, it comes with at least 24 megabytes of L2 cache for the GPU and up to 3 times Zen 6 cores and 8 times Zen 6 C cores, making for a total of 11. Then we're looking at 12 megabytes of L3 cache. Moving on when it comes to memory, we're looking at a 192 bit memory bus with up to a whopping 48 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory. Then for the NPU, it comes with up to 110 tops at 6 watts or 46 tops at 1.2 watts. Then finally, they are apparently targeting a 2027 launch date. All in all, this is said to be a massive jump in performance, but even more than that, it's an absolute monster of an APU in general. And if AMD does like what they've done in the past with Xbox chips, they may even eventually sell it to consumers. So while that does it for today, what do you think about this beastly APU? And do you think that more games will decide to opt out of ray tracing? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to save money on your PC parts with Jawa. And as always, have a great day.